Welcome everyone. Today finds me in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at the Miller Coors Brewery, where we are going to take the Miller Brewery tour. Miller, the champagne of beers. My goodness, this is quite an old vehicle. The Miller High Life Cruiser, this thing looks like it goes all the way back to the 50s, maybe even the 40s. Usually we end in the gift shop, but my tour doesn't start for almost a half hour, so we're gonna look around the gift shop right now. Maybe save us a little time when we're all done. The interesting thing is, this place is almost empty. There were only a few cars in the parking lot, so it's early in the morning, 10.30 a.m. It'll be interesting to see how many people are on this tour. And I always say that a gift shop isn't a gift shop without shot glasses, but since this is Miller, I suppose beer glasses are more appropriate. What are those? Five dollars? That is not a bad price for a beer glass. And there's all kinds. Look at this. They have the old-fashioned hams glass. So we see hams, lining kugel, Miller Lite, Blue Moon, just a lot of different brands are represented, including their flagship brand, Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. And there's the classic Lady in the Moon. And here we have cloth patches. They seem to be making a comeback. I see a lot more cloth patches these days. Now these are some nice souvenirs. They are handles for beer tappers. And surprisingly, not very expensive either for what they are. Here's the Ham's Bear. And that's $60, not a bad price. And some of the more ordinary are $40. Very nice. And here is a cocktail recipe book. And here we see a large collection of postcards. I'll have to pick some of these up for my Patreon sponsors. And you thought it was just Budweiser that had Clydesdales. And here's a real Wisconsin product, a cheese cozy. Oh, that is a candle. Isn't that fun? That is a Miller Lite candle. And here's a cheese head. I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna put it on. I don't know what the story is with this, but we have one full-size guy, and he's holding a tiny little man. And down below him are all kinds of tiny men. Apparently, they're making Miller beer. That's how they fill the bottle. And there is a penny press. What can you get? You can get the classic lady in the moon, the cruiser, the Miller Lite logo, and a picture of the brewery. And this is really a large, impressive gift shop. This is kind of cool. If you have the old fashioned bottles, you got a bottle opener. You can hang it on your wall, $25. Miller socks and hats. What's a hat go for? $20, that is not a bad price. And look at this hoodie. In addition to the pockets, it has a pouch which I presume is to hold your can of beer. And there we go. There it is in action. Okay, we start out with a beer right out of the gate. Good morning. Good morning, go ahead and have Thank you. So there we go. We get to help ourselves to a middle of light. A little early for a beer, but why not? It does taste good on a hot day. Fred Miller found exactly what he was looking for right here in Milwaukee. Fine hops and barley, skilled craftsmen, and an abundance of pure, fresh water. Frederick Miller bought the Plank Road Brewery, complete with its underground caves in what would become Miller Valley. And in 1886, Miller opened a brand new brew house, the same historic brew house you'll be walking past today here in Miller Valley. Beautiful 
today for taking the tour. Parts of it take you outside. I wouldn't want to do it in the winter, but right now it's a wonderful day to be out. I think we're going to have a good time. Oh, maybe 20 people ended up showing up for this tour. And overhead, you can see that classic lady in the moon holding up the awning. Shh, don't tell anybody. I already spilled some beer on my pants. Yes, this is where we kept our horses and wagons that we used to deliver our beer. So behind me is a stable. Back in the day, 125 horses and their wagons lived there. So now we're going to go look at the brew kettles. He said it's 100 degrees in this building. 56 stairs. Climbing and climbing and climbing. All right, just want to point out down here in brew kettle number one, I see a batch boiling in the brew kettle. You might want to just take a look at that. I think you can see the surface there uh, in a boil. Barley is the most important solid ingredient in beer. Before we use that barley, it goes through a process called malting. And it becomes barley malt. Sometimes it's just called malt. But that process is to steep the grain in water until it starts to sprout, it starts to germinate. And the longer the barley's in the kiln, the darker brown it becomes. So if it's in there a short time, it makes a nice light colored beer. If it's in there a medium amount of time, it makes an amber beer. If it's in there a very long time, it makes a real dark beer. Next, the mash goes into the water ton, and it simply filters out the spent grain. We're done with the grains, it's time to get rid of them. And then that sugary liquid, it is called wort, W-O-R-T, brewer's wort. It goes down into one of our six brew kettles. Now once we've added the hops, next stop is fermentation. Our fermentation building is a building across the street with the American flag on top. Once there, that's when we add the yeast. And the yeast digests those sugars and creates two things, CO2 and alcohol. The beer's in fermentation eight to 10 days, and it goes to aging for another 10 to 14 days. And then finally, it's ready to be packaged into cans, bottles, and kegs. And boy, he wasn't kidding. It is hot up here. And back down, 56 stairs. And I should add, it stinks. I mean, it smells bad. After that, this 80 degree day feels downright cool. Time for Miller High Life. If you want a soft drink, I can help with that. I do. And we get it in a real glass this time. And isn't this a beautiful bar? When we get back to the beer tent, they have six or eight brands there on tap that usually include. This is so refreshing after being in that hot building. Back in the day, the breweries owned their own taverns where they only sold their breweries' products. So this was a place where employees, locals, out-of-town visitors would come to socialize and enjoy some Miller beer. We give you folks a couple of minutes to enjoy your beer. Now we are able to take our beer with us to the next stop, which is the cave. And here we are entering the cave. This is really cool. Look at that, they have the horse harnesses. An old guy delivering ice. And let's work our way down into the cave. Ooh, it's getting nice and cool down here. And along the way, there are, there are these little shadow boxes made out of beer barrels. Frederick Miller arrived here in 1855. He found the Plank Grove Brewery for sale. He paid $2,070 for the Plank Grove And of course, along with that purchase came these caves. These caves also were created in 1849. So the caves are the oldest thing here at the brewery. 
and you can appreciate the cave we're used as our giant refrigerator, keeping our beer nice and cool as a way to deliver it. Big blocks of ice and bring it in, line it up next to the walls in the cave. That ice would last the whole year. So we started using modern refrigeration. We abandoned the caves in 1907. These caves are by far the coolest part of the tour. This is really neat. Across the street is the old beer garden that I remember, but I don't think that's the one we'll be going into today. There was another beer garden just outside the gift shop. I suspect that's where we're gonna end up. Up there in the overpass, you can see cases of beer going by in the assembly line. Isn't that interesting? I better catch up to my tour. And in those two buildings, we have a total of four can lines three bottle lines and two keg lines, and we can package on a daily basis 600,000 cases packaged daily. Our cans are filled even faster. This machine can fill up to 2,000 cans per minute. That's a case and a half of beer every second. In real time, it's almost impossible to see what's happening. But when we drop down to slow motion, we can see the empty aluminum cans being filled with fresh beer, sealed with high-tech lids, and sent on their way to the pasteurizer. A high-speed laser printer shoots a freshness date onto the bottom of every can, the neck of every bottle, and the side of every case. This code tells distributors and retailers when to pull the beer off the shelf to make sure our consumers always get the freshest beer. Now that the bottles and cans are all filled, sealed, date coated and labeled, it's time to put them in boxes. So here's a real old-fashioned filling machine. You can see that's where the bottle would go and those tubes would fill the bottle. And over here we have a single one bottle at a time capping machine. You step on that pedal and it puts a cap on your bottle of beer pretty laborious process compared to what they do today. This is great. Looks to be about the turn of the century, maybe a little later. And look at all this beer. It's like the warehouse at the end of Indiana Jones. This warehouse is the size of four NFL football fields and it is packed. It is so full. And they say that the beer does not stay in here any longer than a day and a half. Amazing. So these are everything we can have. We've already had Miller Lite. I think I might try a Liney. And they even have Oktoberfest this time of year. Have to give it a try. All right, the best time, tasting time. So this is Liney Kugel Oktoberfest. These look to be about 10 ounce glasses. You get four samples throughout the tour. I don't know, in my book, especially when a tour starts at 10.30 in the morning, that's plenty of beer. Not bad. I was surprised that they had Oktoberfest so early, but just early in August, but um, I'm glad I had a chance to try something different. So far on the tour, they started you out with a Miller Lite. Then when you were in that bar, you got Miller High Life, and then here you get your sample of eight different beers. You get to have two more samples. It's not a real busy tour today, so you can see there is a lot of space here in this beer garden. And as I said, there's another beer garden across the street. So my second sample is Lining Kugel, what is it called? Northwood Lock. That's not bad. You know I'm not much of a beer drinker. When I do drink beer, I typically like something 
a lot fuller, you know, some of the darker beers. This is not bad, however. For the $5 of this tour, it's $10 if you're out of town, it's $5 if you're local, if you're a Wisconsin resident. And out of that you get a tour, you get four samples of beer, plus you get a commemorative glass or cup when you leave. I don't know what that is yet, but we'll take a look at it and I'll show it to you as I finish the tour. And I have to say, these are about the nicest picnic tables I have ever seen. We're inside the Miller Cruiser. This is a replica. This is not the original. They went out and they found an original 1957 bus and they decked it out just like the original cruiser that they had from the 50s. And inside, they made it into a mini museum. You don't even have to take the tour. You can come here and just pull into the Miller parking lot and you can see the Miller Cruiser. And there's Frederick Miller. Well, he kind of looks contemporary with that mustache and goatee, doesn't he? Well, here you see the history of Miller Brewery. Here's a grandson of the founder, and he took it right into the 1950s and was the first one to advertise on television. And they have a little miniature bar kind of set up here as part of their display. Very nicely done. This is a really cool thing. If you're ever in Milwaukee, if you don't have time for the tour, stop in and see this Miller Cruiser bus because it's really neat and it's free. The view on the tide is your own. It must be Miller Tide. They did a really nice job on that. Okay, let's take a look at my haul. So let's see what we've got here. So we get this glass. This is really a nice glass. Miller, Milwaukee. Miller's the best Milwaukee beer. So that comes with the tour. And inside there, they have a wooden nickel. Hey, this is the second wooden nickel I've gotten on my tours. Good for one Miller beer. So I guess we could turn this in for a beer. And you get a paper thanking you for visiting the brewery. That's kind of nice. And then for my Patreon supporters, I don't know if you know it, but my $3 Patreon sponsors do get postcards from me and the different places I visit. So if you sponsor this channel, you're probably going to get one of these postcards very soon in the mail. Some very cool stuff here at Miller Brewery. So I want to thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed our tour of the Miller Brewery in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. As always, I encourage you to like and share the videos. Please leave your comments down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe and ring that bell icon so you know when I post new videos. From Milwaukee, Wisconsin, I'm Mark with the Average Me Channel.